China has just pulled off its most groundbreaking space mission yet, returning 37.25 kilograms of live biological and advanced material samples from orbit. This isn't routine science. It's a bold leap into the future of space medicine, lunar construction, and long-term survival beyond Earth. From human stem cells to lunar-ready alloys, these samples unlock answers we've never had access to before. Let's break down why this mission is a game-changer and what it means for the future of humanity in space. King Gong's latest mission returned 20 types of biological samples, the most diverse batch ever recovered during the space station's operational phase. These aren't ordinary lab materials. We're talking about human stem cells, bone cells, bronchial epithelial cells, human and animal embryos, proteins, and even fruit flies, all exposed to the unique conditions of low Earth orbit. Each sample was carefully retrieved and rushed to Beijing for analysis, with time-sensitive biological materials inspected immediately by the Technology and Engineering Center for Space Utilization under the Chinese Academy of Sciences, CAS. The primary goal? To understand how microgravity and space radiation influence human biology at a cellular level. For instance, scientists are closely studying bone cells to decipher why astronauts suffer rapid bone density loss in space. Understanding this process could lead to medical breakthroughs not only for astronauts but also for elderly patients on Earth facing osteoporosis. Then there are the human stem cells, cells capable of developing into any tissue in the body. In space, preliminary studies suggest they might behave differently, potentially accelerating regenerative healing or offering insights into aging and immune response. Their analysis could pave the way for space-enhanced therapies. Among the most groundbreaking samples are embryos, both human and animal. Researchers want to determine if early mammalian development can proceed normally in microgravity. Do cells divide the same way? Can tissues form properly? These answers are essential if humanity ever hopes to reproduce safely in space, whether in orbital habitats or future lunar colonies. And then there are the fruit flies, tiny creatures with outsized scientific value. With short life cycles and well-mapped genetics, they allow scientists to track biological changes across multiple generations quickly. By examining how they adapted to space, scientists can study genetic mutation rates, radiation resistance, and neurobehavioral effects triggered by orbital living. Each of these samples plays a part in unraveling how the human body might adapt, or fail to adapt, to long-term space travel. While the biological payload captured headlines, the materials science experiments aboard Tiangong are equally groundbreaking. These return materials are not conceptual, they are physical prototypes forged in space conditions, including tungsten alloys, high-strength steel, semiconductor materials, specialty crystals, lunar soil binding agents, and space-grade lubricants. Each was designed to answer one key question. What can we build in space that we simply can on Earth? Let's start with the tungsten alloys and high-strength steels. On Earth, gravity causes convection and sedimentation during metal solidification, which can create imperfections. In space, metals solidify differently, often yielding stronger, more uniform microstructures. These properties are crucial for aerospace components, such as jet engines, where failure under extreme heat or stress isn't an option. Researchers will now analyze whether these space-forged metals could outperform their Earth-made counterparts in durability, corrosion resistance, and heat tolerance. Then there's the development of specialty crystals, which are notoriously difficult to grow perfectly on Earth. Even slight gravity-induced disturbances can distort their molecular structure. In microgravity, crystals form without sedimentation or buoyancy-driven convection, allowing for larger, purer growth. This is especially important in deep ultraviolet lithography, a key step in manufacturing semiconductors for next-gen processors. These space-grown crystals could lead to more efficient and smaller chips for electronics back home. Also included were semiconductor substrates exposed to space radiation and thermal cycling. These experiments help identify material behavior in harsh environments, informing the design of future satellites, rovers, and computing systems built to withstand years of orbital wear. And finally, novel lubricants tested aboard Tiangong aim to solve a space engineering nightmare, mechanical failure in vacuum. Traditional lubricants evaporate or degrade in space. 
The lubricants returned from Tiangong were tested for resilience in extreme temperature swings and pressureless environments. These materials are not only futuristic, they're essential. As we build toward deep space missions and lunar operations, materials made in orbit could outperform anything manufactured on Earth, revolutionizing engineering from the ground up. The sheer scale of this latest return isn't just impressive, it's strategic. This was the eighth batch of experimental samples returned from the Tiangong space station, but by far the most advanced and diverse. China has moved from the proof-of-concept stage to operating a fully functional, orbiting R&D laboratory. The message is clear. Tiangong isn't about exploration alone. It's about innovation, autonomy, and global positioning in space science. This mission signals a transition from sporadic research to systematic, results-driven experimentation. These 25 experiments, spanning biology, chemistry, materials, and technology, are not isolated efforts. They're part of a much broader plan to support China's roadmap for deep space exploration, long-duration crewed missions, and eventually human presence on the Moon and Mars. Importantly, this isn't about mimicking what the ISS has done for decades. It's about carving a new, more focused path. Unlike the ISS, which operates through multinational collaboration, Tiangong gives China full control over objectives, data, and timelines. This allows for faster iteration, aligned goals, and national tech sovereignty, a key advantage in an increasingly competitive space landscape. Why does that matter? Because it means China can independently develop space medicine protocols, manufacturing processes, and even defensive technologies derived from orbital research. From cancer therapy informed by radiation studies to lightweight alloys ideal for drone swarms or satellites, the dual-use nature of these experiments cannot be ignored. And China isn't keeping this to itself. Through its space life science and utilization program, it has opened limited collaboration with universities and global research bodies, positioning itself as not just a space leader but a scientific partner. In doing so, it's expanding Tiangong's purpose beyond national goals to one of global relevance. Perhaps most importantly, Tiangong now serves as a testbed for sustaining life beyond Earth. Every sample, every compound returned helps build the blueprint for future orbital stations, lunar bases, and interplanetary vessels. The next generation of astronauts may rely on these findings for their health, survival, and mission success. This mission from Tiangong wasn't just a sample return, it was a bold declaration of intent. From stem cells to smart alloys, China has proven it can not only perform high-level science in space, but also return tangible results that matter here on Earth. Whether it's improving astronaut health, building stronger technologies, or laying the groundwork for lunar habitats, these findings reshape what's possible. Tiangong is no longer just a space station. It's a fully operational lab for the future of humanity. And if this is just the beginning, the next chapter could be revolutionary. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching and see you next time.